It is September 5th. It is Labor Day weekend, a three-day weekend, and uh, an anniversary of when I got run over on my motorcycle. I bring it up every year because I'm alive and I'm happy to be alive. That's why I always say, God, fuck, I can't believe it. But here I am, and here you are, tuning in. A holiday, three-day weekend. It is 1,000 degrees here in L.A., a thousand degrees. It is unreal, the heat. My dog Gertie does not dig it. I don't dig it, really. I can, I can deal with it, but I don't dig it. And it definitely lets me know, oh, yeah, I must have been crazy thinking I could live in Palm Springs during the pandemic. I, I, you know, you can't, you go out to your car or your motorcycle or whatever, and you just, you get in and you go, fuck this. And you go back in the house. That's what's going on today in L.A. And it's going to be happening all week. And I'm cutting out on Thursday to start the Marcus King tour. So uh, I will escape the heat and just dive right into probably some gnarly humidity on the East Coast. That's me babbling at the top of the show. Glad you're here. And I have an incredible guest today. It is the return of Greg Dooley. Greg Dooley is a great friend. I have loved this man's music since I first heard it all the way back in 1992. Late night watching 120 Minutes. The song comes on, Turn on the Water. I'm like, wow, who is this band? And when I really think about it, uh, the Afghan Wigs was probably my start of soul rock. Them being so heavily R&B influenced, especially back then. It was a wild mixture. And you had just that melting pot of indie, alternative music, college rock, whatever you want to call it. It was this beautiful mixture of bands that all toured together. And they were all great. But the Afghan wigs, there was something about them. They were just another level. I would even go as far as just to say they were just fucking elegant. They were just better than all of us. And Greg Dooley, the lead frontman guitar player, up there in his suits, belting out a little bit of Prince here and there. But in 93, they drop a record called Gentleman. And it is a goddamn masterpiece. And, and it, is, it is tough to beat that record. If you're a band and you drop a record like Gentlemen, you just go like, well, fuck. I'm glad we have a masterpiece in our, you know, repertoire. 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 I can't say words. <laughs> I cannot say words. You say words like 10 times in your life. And when you go to say it, you, you say it confident. I'm going to throw that. I'm going to, here we go. Bam. And you just eat it. Anyway, gentlemen, 1993 had Greg on years ago, five years ago. And it was just unbelievable to talk to this man about how that record was made and, and just the impact it had on everybody, especially in San Francisco. It was just played everywhere. Over the years, dropping all kinds of great records. 1965, Black Love. Everybody with this band has their, their particular favorite. In Spades came out in 17, great record. But about a week ago, I sat down and finally, you know, dug in to their new record that comes out this Friday. How do you burn? And I was really not prepared for how great this record was. And I will tell you this right now. Wilco has probably got the record of the year for me so far until this came out. And Wilco, same thing. Band deep in their career, dropping a crushing second masterpiece, maybe third masterpiece, in their fucking discovery. 
That's what's going on with the Afghan wigs. They may have just dropped the greatest record of the year. I would probably say right now it's tied between Cruel Country and How Do You Burn, Afghan wigs and Wilco. This record blows me away so much that it has put me into a full-blown great mood all week, and it has lit a fire under my ass which uh, I, I'm always looking for inspiration, amuses, and, and, and signs to keep fucking going. And, and it could be anything. It could be a great meal, like, oh, my God, I'm so glad I'm alive. But when a record drops from one of your favorite bands and it's this good, my God. Uh, Jija, track four. Don't know what the song title means. I'm going to dig more into it. I should have asked Greg why he was on. But there is a track that, okay, it goes, I'll make you see God, opens up with a crushing rocker. Then it goes, The Getaway. Then Catch a Cult, Jija, Please, Baby, Please. That's side one, and it is flawless. And then you get to side two, a line of shots. And then it just keeps going. I can't wait to get deeper into the back side. This is one of those records like uh, where you fall in love with the first five. And then later you go, oh, shit, the second five are even better. That's what's going on with this thing. Anyway, they're, they're headed out on tour this week like myself. Uh, they'll be all over America. I hope to run into them somewhere. And do yourself a favor. And dig into this record. Oh my God. It has been, uh, it has just been gold to me all week. This podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp.com. And listen, I got a great, great offer for you 10% off the first month of online therapy. It has been a fucking rough couple of years, man. The political climate. The, the planet's on fire, the inflation, the anger out there. It just seems like everything's going to bust. And you need somebody to talk to. I know you do. I know I do. And what better way than online therapy? You don't need to leave your house. You don't have to drive somewhere to go do this. Better help online therapy will work for your needs and can match you with your own licensed professional therapist in less than 48 hours. You sit down, open up your computer, and bam, you can get some help. It's not a crisis line, and it's not a self-help. It's actual professional therapy done securely online. Worldwide, it is available. And I got an offer for you. I'm telling you, use this. Better help, H-E-L-P, dot com slash delray 10 percent off right now tell your friends if they need help give them the code better help that is b-e-t-t-e-r-h-e-l-p dot com slash delray this is fantastic man i'm telling you is, and, and look therapy is cool i've said it before we when you know you're growing up you're like i don't need therapy yes you need therapy once in a while you need somebody to talk to and BetterHelp is perfect. BetterHelp, 10% off your first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com slash Delray. Yes, 10% off. Okay, a couple other things, then we'll get into it. I hope you're having a great three-day weekend. I am starting the tour in three days. I uh, hope to see you out there. Marcus King, myself, Neil Francis, all the tour dates are on deandelray.com. I will have merch out on the road. And I hope to see you guys all face to face. I'm going to be doing comedy and it's going to be a wild ride. Six weeks of comedy and rock and roll. I cannot wait. Also, I want to tell you, patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey. Bonus episodes, 130 of them are up right now. I'm going to be talking about the Taylor Hawkins uh, tribute that happened over the weekend. Man, it was incredible. And I'll be digging into that, so tune in to the bonus episodes on Patreon, patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey. And also, I'll be doing a Zoom Fest this week. And I will be doing them while I'm out on the road. A lot of great guests coming up. 
You can get all my podcasts at cactusradionetwork.com, including The Grail. I just dropped a new episode with Chris Rogers, the man who painted the incredible mural of Brody Stevens, my favorite human, fantastic comedian. Rest in peace, Brody Stevens. I miss you every day. And now I can drive by in Reseda and see your beautiful smile and your 818 shirt and... uh you know, just, oh, God. So check out Chris Rogers' story on the Grail this week. Great. Also, I will tell you this. Something happened. Somebody hacked into my SBC Global uh, email, and I have not been able to fucking retrieve it. If anybody is a master out there, I called AT&T, and these dicks are just saying it's gone. After 20 years how can your email just be gone, you know? So uh, hit me up. I am fucking, oh, God, I am just furious. Live by the computer, die by it. That's what I always say. If you have a dog, keep him inside. It's hot as hell this week. And also, treat him right. Feed him the best food on the planet. Migos. MigosDog.com. Just clean, clean human grade food made right in Malibu. If you live in California, pick this stuff up available at Erwan. Go to their website, migosdog.com. They got toppers. You can put on your uh, dry food. They have uh, dog treats and they're going to be starting a YouTube channel to show you how to cook your own food for your dog. I know this sounds wacky, but what, what better way to treat your dog than just with great food. So they're around forever. We need these dogs in our life. Right, Gertie? Gertie, Gertie, Gertie. Migosdog.com. Here we go. Let's get into it. I love all of you, and uh, you're going to dig this. This is the second time Greg's been on, so if you did not hear the first one, he was on about five years ago. Here we go. Candles are lit. It is a three-day weekend. We have Greg Dooley in the house. Well, I am back at the Greg Dooley crib, and uh, it's 100-something degrees out. Thank God for AC. I love air conditioning. I know, right? I love air conditioning. Do you ever drive in a convertible and with the top down, but the air conditioning on? I have, I have done that. It is the best. How about on the road? Immediately walk into the hotel, mm. 65. Yeah. I have uh, um, uh, my car, I can turn on the AC before I get to it. And my house, I can turn on the AC until I get to it. These uh, these Nest thermostats, they have this thing called eco mode, which is great. Yeah. But sometimes I'm like, you know, I'm coming home now and I don't like eco modes like, hey, it'll be your temperature in 40 minutes. And I'm like... No, it'll be my temperature now. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Don't tell me what to do. I, I am the boss of you. Yeah. 40 minutes. It's like, yeah. nah. We, we, it's 2022. We can just go cold now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, speaking of air conditioning, was just in Europe for three weeks who were also experiencing oh, know, yeah. the global warming phenomenon. And uh, um they're not prepared. They don't have air conditioning anywhere. They don't. They don't. They don't. You know. They haven't needed it. So uh, if you're looking for uh, uh, to make money, yeah, yeah, AC guys move there. Get into the uh, get into the Euro slash UK uh, air conditioning business. It's going to be doing gangbusters. Yeah, it's, it's so true, right? Because when you're there, and it was not, it was 98 degrees in Copenhagen while I was there. God, that is scorcher. That is no. Yeah, that is no. You know, I mean, you can, you just do not imagine any ice skating when it's 98. Were you playing outdoor festivals? Or? No, we, we played one, two, three festivals, and they were, we, and we played at night, and they were all still hot. Oh, yeah. Oh, last night, dude, I was at the comedy store, Yeah, and it's fucking 90 outside. Yeah. 90? Yeah. I went to, I went to dinner last night and uh, in an air-conditioned restaurant. But restaurants are also cooking food over open flame. And there's maybe 80 people in the restaurant. Like, that's a lot of body heat. Like, I, I had to go outside to cool to off. Cool off. <laughs> so. 
You know, it's funny you talk about global warming and everything, and I'm about to be 57, and there's some kind of weird thing with me now. Uh, I don't know if you think about this. How old are you? I am 57. Right. So do you think about at this point in your life, I don't know why that my brain goes there, but I'm like, fuck, it's pretty much over. I mean, I'm glad that I grew up in the 70s. And I mean, you know, with fentanyl and global warming and cancers and not to be grim and good but it's just like man you can't do anything anymore you can't eat anything good to see you dear yeah i know (laughs) (laughs) for the last time Uh, it's crazy though i mean it's just uh i try to get it out of my head but i'm like wow what the fuck i mean it you know it's it's hard to get it out of your head when it's when you're like when you're confronted with it every day yeah but uh um but there's, you know, that's why we create these happy distractions for ourselves. Yeah, you're so right. You're so right. One of those distractions I'm pulling an end to, though, purchasing shit. I'm, I'm completely, I'm going full, like diabetes, how I quit sugar. Mm-hmm. I'm going uh, buy diabetes. I'm, I'm, I'm quitting it. Okay. You know? uh, what, what do you, so you're done buying stuff. I think really what got me there is uh, I realized... Somebody said this to me. I hosted an event for Tudor watches last week. And we were talking about watches and how, you know, yeah, you get the ultimate one. And I said, yeah, one time I had this watch. And the guy said, did it make you happy? And I go, you know what? It it didn't fix anything. And he goes, I know, right? (laughs) It was so real. Right. Yeah. Fuck. I mean, you at least moved and got to purge. Yeah. You know, um, I had a friend who would come help me purge my house every year and she moved away and I'm sad about that. Yeah. So yeah. when I get back, I'm going to do a couple of other things. Um, uh, but one thing I'm definitely going to do is purge this place again. Yeah. It's, it feels good. It does. Yeah. Well, you know what I found? Very cleansing. I found a fucking box of VHS tapes. Oh boy. That I'd been carrying around since the 80s. Mm-hmm. One of them was labeled... MTV Judas Priest Screaming for Vengeance tour. Wow. Oddly, I I have been on a little bit of a live vengeance oh. uh, uh, YouTube rabbit hole. Yeah. Uh, I saw that tour. So did I. Like five times. Oh my god. And Maiden open. Maiden was opening for him then. Right. Uh, and that was probably Number of the Beast. One of. The, I mean, you know, imagine you you got to see like. Iron Maiden and Judas Priest, both in their heyday. Yeah. Like, you know, back to back, like just, you know, three hours. Of just the, fire. Of, 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 of some of the best rock and roll ever. But like, I was uh, um, Christopher Thorne, who is, is, is uh, I've been working with for the past eight years and is now in the band. He, you know, I was kind of schooling him a little bit on. Metal? Metal. Well, he played metal as a kid, but he, like, for instance, he did not know that Green Man Alicia was a Fleetwood Mac cover. Wow. He didn't know that Diamonds and Rust was a Joan Baez cover. Right. And, uh, uh, I mean, that, that's, you know, for, for someone, like, for a, for a heavy metal band to be, you know, esoteric enough to, to not only, like, interpret songs as varied as those, but to do it convincingly and with a lot of power... You know, uh, um, they're both great songs, but like they're 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 excellently handled in in the hands of Judas Priest. Judas Priest was one of the best live bands I've ever seen. Hands uh, down, Iron Maiden as well. So, Hands down. Yeah. You know, uh, when you listen to when he does the scream on "Victim of Changes" mm-hmm. at, at the breakdown, you know, da 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 da. That. I mean, everything about that, it's so, like, thematic and, and like, it, it's getting ready to punch you in the face with a man hitting that vocal scream. It's yeah. unreal, man. Yeah. It's unreal. Well, his, his, uh, um, his, uh, his wail in Green Man Alishi, yeah. the, 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 the same thing. But, like, uh, I saw, like, that was... I had seen the point of entry tour as yep, well. Same here. Uh, before that, which is when they, you know, obviously were like moving more into a, a like a songy kind of like heading out to the highway. Yeah. Hot rocking. Yeah. Desert plains. Yeah. 
Desert Plains are very underrated. Incredible. Uh, Judas Priest song. And uh, they played that on the Live Vengeance tour. So. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like the whole, you remember the opening, the electric eye. The opening, best. Like, I mean, you know. The Hellion. There's a, there's a great, there's a great uh, live clip of from that, like a, a an outdoor festival. Us Festival. Is I was there and festival? he walks up. He walks up talking. Incredible. It's yeah. A, yeah. I was there yeah. Yeah. sitting in the bleachers on the side of the stage. Look, I got goosebumps. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it was just like, where's the vocal coming from? Right. You know, yeah. and then here he comes, and he's got his day leather on, yeah. the the short sleeve yeah. vest with the chrome, yeah. you know, up here in space. Yeah. Perfect. I'm looking down on you, yeah. my laser strays. <laughs> I love when he, you think you private eyes up nothing up this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Have you man. met him? I had him on the podcast oh, about wow. a year ago, oh, man. and he taught me something being you know 56 years old 11 years doing the podcast you know almost 700 episodes he was the most professional i'd ever seen he taught me something where throughout the interview when he was talking to me he'd be like you know dean he would use my name a lot and i was like oh, this guy is so pro you know mm -hmm. and uh he gave me like an hour and a half, and we talked about him opening for Zeppelin at Day on the Green, the last Zeppelin shows ever in the States in uh, 77. Right. And those they, were those, the Bill Graham San Francisco right, shows right. at the Coliseum, right? Yeah, yeah. Oakland Coliseum, yeah. yeah. Skinner and did a bunch of those, Skinner too. Skinner did two of them, Frampton. Yeah. Uh, that's where I saw all my shows. Right. And just get a schooling for 850. Did you see Skinner? I never saw Skinner or Zeppelin. Did you but see Frampton? I didn't see Frampton either. Mm -hmm. um, the ones I saw were like, you know, ACDC Power Age tour. They were uh, with Cheap Trick, uh, Ted Nugent, Journey, right. uh, Blue Oyster Cult. I saw Aerosmith, Nugent, co-headline, uh, all these different ones. Foreigner, you know, huge right. with, the, yeah. with the scrims. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with them. Uh, to so much that I've had the, the, the artist that painted those scrims, Dennis Larkin, on the show he's the one that made the sets for those because oh, wow. bill's whole uh obsession was i don't want to see scaffolding yeah i want them to be sets i want it to look like a broadway play yeah and fuck man I, uh, it's some of the greatest days of my life right it's funny to think that where afghan wigs it you know when they start there was that very uh you know line in the sand with people and I never understood it. I'd be listening to Prince, but then I'd be listening to Maiden. Then I'd be listening to Earth, Wind, and Fire. Then I listened to Cheech and Chong, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Elvis Costello, sure. whatever. And there was really, it was really rigid. So for you to really talk about it, I would bet that maybe some deep Afghan Wigs fans would be like, oh, what, Dooley's into Priest and Maiden? You know right, what I mean? Yeah. But you remember that era where he was just at school? I, when, I, when, I, when I got to college... And started, I moved into a, basically a punk rock house. Right. And everybody in there was a, in a band, in a new wave band or a punk rock band. And they were all, I mean, all my roommates were all cool. But they literally, as, as I got into that music and as they introduced me to the music and I appreciated the music and I went to shows with them and I went to their shows. But there were moments where like people in that scene would try to get me to disavow things that I used to like. And I'm like... Why can't I like both of those things? Like, you know, like, are you literally like you only listen to punk rock? So you don't listen to Patsy Klein, Frank Sinatra, Miles Davis. Yeah. Like you're leaving a lot of music on the table. You know what I mean? Like by by being so I'm like, I appreciate this. I and and, and thank you for turning me on to Gang of Four, The Damned, Tusker Do all of the things that I'm learning here, even a, a, you know, a deep dive into uh, you know, the earlier works of Talking Heads, which had like, passed me by, because I was in high school. You know? But I mean, I still, you know, I, I loved Prince then, and, and there, was, there was a little ambivalence about that, because everybody's so rigid about punk rock. I have always been an omnivorous person. I was even, I mean, even when I didn't know things, as, you know, as, as someone who, who who got introduced by uh, music by working at record stores. 
And, uh, and I'll tell you a funny story about how I kind of like started to dip my toe into jazz music. Yeah. I worked at Tower Records on Sunset Strip. Oh, the great one. The legendary and one. The legendary one. I mean, so many famous people in and out of that. But uh, um, we had to take a test. You had to take a test, a music test to get a job there if you couldn't. It was a, and it was not an easy test. Wow, like you, I never knew that, and I oh, watched yeah. the documentary. Yeah, I, I, I didn't see the documentary. It's great. But, okay, I know Colin, but I, I haven't seen it yet. But uh, um, uh, Dennis, who was the manager, I took the test, and I, everybody I knew there took the test. Anyway, that was great because you're with people who know things. Now, I didn't know everything, and if I didn't know something, I would go ask Dean. For instance, like, hey, Dean, do you know the? Can you help this person? Um, you know, hey, this guy knows reggae, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, during your shift, uh, there was uh, a place in the middle of. Did you ever go to? Oh, yeah, I loved it. Oh, yeah. Okay, so in the middle of the store was the information booth, which is was the, the brain of the store. It's where the turntables were, it's where the CD players were. Um, and for one hour a day, each employee got to man the information booth. Wow! Uh, during your shift, and you—that meant you got to be the DJ for right, an hour, right? And you know, I mean, I'm hearing all kinds of stuff I didn't know, and I'm playing stuff, and people are like, "Wow, you know," and and this and that. One night, you know, and again, like you know, people that I watched on TV and listened to their records, and you know, famous people are coming in all the time. I had to like. Just kind of like, wow, this is tripping me out. One night, Peter Falk, who had been in the store before, came up to me and he just, he was like, and he, and, and, and by the way, he, he literally talks just like Columbo. <laughs> wow. So when he comes up, me for to bothering you, you ma'am. Yeah, he, you know, just like, and he's like, excuse me, young man, um, do you ever play jazz in here? And uh, I'm like, Mr. Falk, I don't, I don't really know jazz very well. I just kind of know what I know. And he's like, great music. Never, no, not, no, no John Coltrane, no, no Miles Davis, no Charlie Parker. You know, I'm like, I know the names. I just don't know it. I'm 19. You know right, I mean? of course. And, uh, and I had never been exposed to it. You know, he's like, I understand that you can play any, any you can be the DJ to, while you're in this position, right? in the information booth and i'm like yeah and he goes uh let's listen to kind of blue oh yeah what a record and i mean dude i would just whatever peter falk wanted to do of course like let's do it dude you know and uh and and then i put it on and and i loved it you know and that was sort of like that was just someone saying hey check this out and uh um, so that was really my my introduction to jazz. It's like it's that's great. Colombo yeah. turns you on exactly. It, yeah. My you know if with me you know growing up in the Bay Area you had um, KUSF, and now I li- I've been back on a heavy college radio tip over the last couple of years of eighty eight point five because back then you would learn so much because a dude would come on and he'd play like an hour of punk rock. And then another guy would come on, and he'd play an hour of jazz, and he'd be like, what is this? This is killer, mm-hmm. you know? And that was really how I learned different music. That's how I found, you know, Devo growing up. And, sure. And any of, uh, of course, Devo being on SNL and stuff, but any of the- And MTV. Su- and MTV. But Dead Kennedys, I remember, the guy played Holiday in Cambodia on KUSF, and I immediately was like, wow, what is that? And mm-hmm. that is a punk rock song but it's a hit yeah and then you start going well really it's about good songwriting no matter what the fuck the 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 style is that's really what it comes down to something compelling and interesting that grabs your ear and makes you pay attention yeah it makes you feel something right you know uh um that's uh that's getting back to that uh, uh the original question is you know, if you keep your mind up, first of all, there's so much music in the world. It's crazy. Like, you know, it took me a bunch more years to catch up to like, you know, uh, African guitar music or Cambodian psych or, you know, all the other like, you know, like 
it's, it's a big world. Yeah, world it, music, it's man. It's a big world, and, and Americans and English people aren't the only people who make it. Like, you went to, once you like got out and learned that there's a wealth of um, incredible music all all over the place, and you know as I as I've traveled around and uh, um, you know even lived in in when I lived in Italy for a year and, and played in an Italian band, you know like great Italian rock bands, great Italian pop singers, 50s, 60s, 70s, you know now. Uh, uh, just so much great music out there. It's it's uh, uh, and and now and now it's so easy to listen to. Totally. You know? I mean, I uh, uh, years ago I got into TuneIn Radio. I don't know if you've ever listened to that. You, it's an app, and you can literally listen to music from all over the world. You just go in and say like, I want to listen to a station in Ghana. Wow. And there it is. There's a list of stations in Ghana, stations in Port-au-Prince, stations in uh, Ho Chi Minh City, stations in... You that, know. That's incredible, because yeah. then you're going to definitely hear shit you've never heard. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, I mean, listen to listen to a Kingston radio station. You're, you're literally listening to, like, reggae come from... Yeah, from radio, where it's from at. From where it's from. Yeah. So, uh, um uh, I highly recommend tune in radio. Uh, I listen. I, there's there's so many stations I listen to. Uh, uh, there's this great French station. I've I've been talking about it for since I heard it like whatever eight nine years ago called FIP, F I P. I I also love uh, a community radio station out of Memphis called W E V L. There's several great jazz stations I listen to. There's a uh, there's a station called Ambient Sleeping Pill. That, oh, like, I put on at the you know end of the night. Yeah, I got one that's called like Spa. Yeah, Spa Radio. Yeah. Oh man, check out Ambient Sleeping Pill, dude. It's 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 it'll it'll knock you right out. I love that yeah, stuff. It's great. I mean, you know, you and I being from America, the record store and indie radio and also '70s radio was where you learned everything. And, and, you know, record store, I remember being in record stores and just that's where you found out what shit was. I was in New Orleans for Voodoo Fest. Guy was playing a Sid Barrett record, one of the solo records. And I go, is this the new Radiohead? Like, had never heard this Sid Barrett solo records. Wow. He's all, no, these are the two Sid Barrett records. I was like, right. wow. So that kind of shit when you're in there and somebody's spinning stuff that you hope is not just the record of the week mm -hmm. and you learn right away. I mean, I bought those records and left, you know, right. it's like, fuck, these are great. But when you, so you're, you're into priest and then you're living in the punk rock house. Uh, how do you start to mold the sound of the Afghan wigs? Uh, you know, is it because of the time of there, uh, you know, like I said, you had the rock and you had the MTV, but you had a very huge indie radio thing going on, um, pavement and all that. That I mean, the pavement wasn't around when we started, right? So, uh, um, you know, I mean, the you guys are '86, right? That's when we formed. But there was uh, John Curley and I were in a group called Black Republicans that went back to. 85 84 85 wow and uh um so that's giant metal era right there yeah but that's not i mean honestly like my metal was i i sort of not that i walked away from it but but like my going to metal concerts and stuff probably ended in 1983 right um you know, uh, what's the record after Screaming for Vengeance? Defenders of the Faith. Defenders of the Faith. Good one. I like yeah, it. Not one of my favorites. Right. And and I, I started to, you know, I, I you know that there was a zenith there for me. Uh, what's on Defenders of the Faith? Is that Turbo Lover? No, that's Turbo Record. Uh, yeah. Great stuff. Love Bites. Right. Defenders of the Faith is really free wheel burning uh -huh. which is like a screaming metal song that yeah. is like really fucking fast uh they really it it's i think the thing that kind of uh diluted that was the album cover but the record is really fucking heavy right and the tour was amazing man oh my god and then after that you know they get turbo and parental guidance and all that but i see what you're saying 
uh, the band started to get lost from what they were doing because the carrot was dangling of fame and MTV. Yeah. And people started changing completely where they came from to like, what's going on here? Especially with Turbo Lover, you yeah. know? I mean, you know, obviously they're trying to like keep up and stuff. I was already off chasing new pastures then. Right. So by the time we got to the wigs, I mean, the best way I can describe the Afghan wigs is uh, uh, the three songs that we played when we first, when the original four of us got together. We played uh, a song called One Day by The Church from oh, wow. Australia. We played The Rover by Led Zeppelin. Wow. And we played Psychedelic Shack by The Temptations. Wow. So that is sort of like... The mixture there. There's the mixture of the band. And then I'm, you know, at some point, like we busted out Hey, hey, my, my, neat, neat, neat by the damned. Uh, you know, um, we did a, we we did a lot of we did a lot of like weird Rolling Stone songs. Like we do Monkey Man, uh, uh, Stray Cat Blues, oh, wow. Cocksucker Blues. Oh, killer! Um, you know, the, these were like, you know. We would do these things to like stretch the set, right? While, as we were like writing our own songs to uh, to to put it in there, but like really, like there was we 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 collectively liked so much stuff. Uh, Rick McCollum and I uh, uh, really like we both grew up on Jesus Christ Superstar. We play Heaven on Their Minds to this day. Wow! Like I mean, like we I don't think there's ever been five shows go by where we didn't do at least a little bit of Jesus Christ Superstar since the 80s. Yeah. You know, it's just like one of those things that like, uh, that captured us. So there was all kinds of just like, we were a, a strange mixture of a lot of things. Uh, Steve Earle, our original drummer, was a heavy metal drummer and a really good one, you know. Uh, so he, you know, we literally had to play louder because of him. When we formed the Wigs, we were 21. 21, dude. And uh, You're 57 um, now. Yeah. Lifer, so, man. I love yeah. it. So, um, you know, but I mean, man, I, you know, still do covers to this day. Oh, yeah, I know. Well, I saw you back on the Gentleman Tour, and I think you guys did a Prince song, you know. Yeah, uh, we, we did Prince all the time. Yeah, like, you did, uh, you know, a picture of one's mind, you know, baby, baby, baby. I think it was in the middle of a song. But sure, always, ma you know, you know. I'm, I'm a masher. I love, I love, I love, I love to mash. Um, you know, mashing several on this new tour. So yeah, you know, when I first I had you on the podcast before, so if people are listening to this nigga. You're not covering any of the early stuff. Uh, he was on probably I don't know five years ago. Yeah, five years ago. Yeah, and. Um, and we got into course my discovery from 120 minutes watching that late sunday night and seeing the uh don't forget the water what that video Turn on the water yeah yep. that video and then of course becoming obsessed with the gentleman record but as i uh was driving over here i was just thinking about that time and that era of where it was just kind of straight the alternative world was huge 120 minutes man that uh, that shit was massive everybody on there you oh, know sure. yeah and it was uh, what i hosted a it a couple of times oh really oh yeah wow yeah me and uh, uh i would bring my friend donal Logue yeah on with me and uh like we would do uh we would act out movie scenes we uh you can find it, i'm pretty sure you can find it on youtube like it's like we did scarface scenes wow godfather scenes yeah uh um yeah donal and then donal later went on to do the jimmy the cab driver stuff and then later i went back on again and donal did a send up of his cab driver character as a limo driver and you know it's like we we had a lot of fun at MTV like you know like that's that's where I met Ted Demi who was doing Yo MTV raps wow and uh, a very just like fertile you know new exciting time and you know New York was so fun back then and oh god yeah and, limelight all that yeah, shit man I that was tramps I, I couldn't believe how great New York was yeah, back then no yeah, New York is very strange now. New York is like, you know, I mean, I, I still love New York, but 
it like you you you, you walk around the meat packing district now and it's like an outdoor mall it's yeah. like it's almost like Stella McCartney's, you know, yeah, and uh, and all the it's got the boutique hotel there that costs like ten thousand a night to yeah. stay at, and yeah. and uh, and that great restaurant is, was gone, but I, I guess they opened somewhere else now. Uh, that one that had the killer steak sandwich, uh, what was that place called? Oh my god! But anyway, that neighborhood was smoking back in the day, mm -hmm. and you can really even back when you watch Al Pacino's cruising, and it was the full gay neighborhood back then. Sure. You know, it's gone through like three weird transformations. But yeah, New York is way different now, and and some for the better, and some for the worse. Yeah, I mean, but the New York that I saw in the movies in the seventies, yeah, like oh yeah, the, Taxi the, Driver, yeah, the the the, the the CD version of Times Square, yeah. like you know, like by the even by the time I got to, to to New York and whatever first time, I mean, I came to LA before I came to New York. Like I I, I, I moved to LA, and I didn't get to New York until we started playing there, uh, and that was probably around eighty eight. Yeah, and uh, that's about when I hit it. Yeah. And Times Square was. It had the peep shows and shit. Yeah. And then every other shop was a camera shop. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They all oh, sold yeah. the same shit. I oh, was I like, how are these open? Right. Video camera, you know, uh, those were hot. So every yeah. window was video cameras and those uh, Sony point and shoot, the small cameras. I'll tell you what I remember about the early 90s was like seeing the crack epidemic oh, like, yeah. up close. Yeah. You know, because we would we played the Pyramid Club a lot down in uh, um, the Village in Alphabet City, and um, we would stay down there and like stay at somebody's house and stay in somebody's apartment. I mean, and like two of us would stay in the apartment, and the other two of us would stay in the van with baseball bats. Wow! So shit wouldn't get said. That, so, so shit wouldn't get stolen. That's a brutal you know? neighborhood like, back then. It's, you know, I mean, you're. And we had like dudes come and like you'd be you'd finally fall asleep and then you'd hear somebody try in the doors and you're like fuck you know because they see the gear in there you know like are they are assuming there's gear in there and uh, um, I remember one time like we were parked somewhere and I was on van duty and I looked out the window at like six in the morning. And there was a line of people, like literally a line of like 30 people waiting in line to go through some torn down chain link fence into a blown out side of an abandoned building. And they'd go in and then they'd come out. And dude, I saw people in nurses uniforms, guys in three piece suits, dudes in t-shirts, guys in UPS suits. Yeah. Like, and they were going to get whatever they were getting there. And uh, so that was, that's that's the part of New York City, or, or any city for that matter, that I, I, I don't miss. But, uh, you know, there is there is such a thing as too clean. Yeah, there so. is. And it's funny to think about, that wasn't even that long ago. Uh, Burr was telling me that when he was a comedian, he was starting, everybody had their alphabet city bit you know right. every comic would go to it like if a guy was nodding off they're like look at this guy where are you from alphabet city right you know yeah. and now it, it was a place that i tried to live in three years ago it's oh, wow. so, so good you yeah. know but if you look at there's photos you can google like alphabet city 1988 and it looks like uh world war ii oh yeah like the buildings are completely blown out yeah oh my god i mean that Tompkins square park oh uh uh washington park crazy and one time we were we played pyramid me and steve the original wigs drummer we were walking from pyramid to go over to cb's to see somebody and like the crack zombies were out yeah and like they just kind of like come at you but this guy he had like a um he had a a piece of wood with like metal attached to it and he started chasing us remember 28 days later oh yeah remember, remember when zombies weren't slow anymore yeah 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 they can run <laughs> that's what this dude was and he came up and you're like 
oh, that guy's whacked on drugs. He'll never catch me. All of a sudden, like, he's right next to me. Fuck. And I had to run into traffic to, and he followed me, but I started, like, pulling out my, like, Barry Sanders moves. <laughs> you yeah, know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah. To, like, yeah. to, like, juke him. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, I'm like, I got to juke this dude. He's, yeah. He's on me, yeah. you know? And he's, like, he's not... He's not trying to pat me on the back, you know what no. I mean? So I still really have, like, I've, I've been to, uh, um, I've, I, I've been to New York twice since the pandemic, and, uh, but I, I've, I've, I wasn't feeling well either time, so I still don't feel like it. One thing I did notice is that, like, you know, they legalized weed, I guess, in, right. in New York. It is everywhere. Dude. Everywhere. It is like, it's, it's so everywhere that it's almost comical. Yeah, you yeah, know. it's like a cologne. Yeah, it's like those camera stores. Yeah, that's like <laughs> you the camera store. I mean? so. <laughs> it's the new camera store. So I went to, um, you know, I lived in New York and then moved back uh, right at the pandemic. But I went there about a year ago, and I was blown away how fast it slid back to old New York. There was just junkies everywhere. There were people getting robbed. And I was like, oh, whoa, this is the old New York. Right. Real quick. Right. Real quick. And then I went recently about four months ago, and it was kind of getting back to uh, normal Clean, again. Cleaned up again, yeah. Yeah, but it was dark as shit a year ago, man. I was like, I remember I came back, and I was like, wow, man, New York is, is rough. Well, but I mean, everywhere has every, everywhere's kind of gotten dark because- right of uh um you know out of control rent yeah no jobs no jobs i mean there there's jo jobs are coming back now we just came out of this like dystopian science fiction movie road War. that we're still kind of in you know but the uh being in europe especially scandinavia and i'm not trying to like you know offer some sort of like i know it all but i have eyes and i can see and we were in uh, we were in Basque Country in June. Clean, safe, affordable, friendly. Yeah, and I'm like, uh, you know, in Scandinavia, Stockholm, Copenhagen, Oslo, all these places. You know, like, I'm not saying there's any perfect place, but like, I just you know, you don't you don't see homeless people. You see, you know people living happy lives from my eye right and what they all have in common is socialized medicine uh a place to live uh free education yeah um no to, no corporate domination either yeah no corporate domination like uh it's how can how do you not look at that and go i want that i know that should be everywhere and and you're watching it work somewhere, but you won't apply that here. And we're just stuck in this kind of, you know, greed thing. machine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean the, you know, the pharmaceutical companies and the insurance companies, and even the medical industry are—they're all in cahoots. You know, like I mean, I don't know, you know, if you how many doctors you have, but like you got to go through a few doctors. You're like. Wow, do I really need to take that medication every day? Can you explain to me why? Is isn't there like an alternative method I could use? Is there some kind of yeah? Um, you know, is is there another way I can go? And a lot of times I'll go to like, you know, an Eastern practitioner to before I go to a, a Western doctor. Obviously, I mean, there's some things you need. Yeah, like surgeries drop, or whatever. Yeah, and you yeah. Need, if you need to like drop some sort of, you know, uh, uh, antibiotic hammer on something. I get it, but like, I just feel like there's this kind of, you know, I mean, insurance, dude, like we have car insurance, yeah. house insurance, health insurance, and it's all like, but, and, but then if you ever use them, you're out, you're out. Yeah. I had to sue my insurance company who I had for 29 years. Somebody ran me over on the motorcycle, yeah. hit and run. Yeah. And I had uninsured motorist insurance, and after a year, they were not giving it to me. Right. I had to get a lawyer to get the money to pay the hospitals when I got ran over. Yeah. And then, then they're like, yeah, we don't want you anymore. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. you, uh, you had a claim against us. I was like, I didn't. 
somebody ran me over. Right. And so we you, could, you were supposed to be protecting me. Right. You were supposed to be the person I call when I'm in trouble. Right. You know. Now I'm the demon. I'm the demon. And, you know, I mean, look at people with pre existing conditions who can't get health insurance. Oh, like insane. I'm like, uh, dude, we are all, I mean, you know, uh, uh, you know, socialism is like a dirty word to so many people now, but I mean, I am freely a socialist. Like I, there is enough for everybody, man. There and is. There's not only enough for everybody, but there's enough for everybody and still enough for people to be well profitable. Yeah. Profitable. Yeah. You know, but you don't need all of it. You know, you need to be able to like, I mean, every you, you honestly will live a happier life if you help other people have happier lives. Yeah. Well, I knew when I, you know, up the street here during the pandemic, when I went and got gas for $2 and the airline tickets were $31 right. and, and rent was, you know, uh, nothing. I knew they weren't going to go, Hey, we all had it rough. Yeah. They, they're not, they're, they're not going, we all had it rough. They're like, we need to make up these last three years yeah. that we lost on. It's like, yeah, yeah well, we yeah. all lost. Yeah, yeah but yeah. we don't lose. And yeah. then all of a sudden the gas is fucking $6 right. and the rent is 3000 right. and the food, everything's gone up $2, $3. You're like, wait, this used to be $7. Yeah, yeah you know, there yeah. just aren't any anymore. An, an, U, an Uber from Hollywood to Santa Monica is $100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were supposed to be the cheap alternative to a cab. Uh, you know? Yeah. And then, you know, and then you go out on the road. I just saw that Anthrax, they had to cancel the European tour. It just can't do it because, you know, the flights are a zillion dollars. And then, uh, you know, uh, hotels are a zillion dollars now. And, right. and, and bus, dr bus gasoline and all that. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, it just keeps going and going and going. Well, I mean, that's like over there. We were, I've been there. I've been to Europe twice this year. Yeah. And, uh, um, and the, the, uh, the second time we were on a bus for three weeks. And I just happened to like be talking to the bus driver while he was gassing up one time, like in Germany. And uh, he's just like, we're just like watching the numbers tick. And he's like, he goes, uh, he's like, that war in Ukraine is going to be the end of us, you know? And, uh, and I'm like, well, not the end of you, you know, I, 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 I see your strange metaphor, but like, right. Those are real people dying defending yeah. their country. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean, I'm like, I can't, I can't. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna go in and get some potato chips now. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. This conversation's over. Yeah. So, uh, um, you know, but like clearly, you know, like what's happening in Ukraine. Uh, if you didn't know, you certainly know by now. Like, you know, the oil and the grain there are being held hostage, and those that that. The, that fuel and um, and the the food that's being choked down that nobody can get to is you know it's hurting everybody and that's how that that again goes back to like man there's plenty for everybody why just let everybody have some but like greedy power mad people will never allow that to happen so. yeah I think the last time you and I hung we went to a concert together. And then kind of like the pandemic kind of came a few months later. Did we go to Alan Parsons? Yeah. yeah right. That was great. It was great. It was there great. We yeah. Right? We we're at that theater. And uh, I, that's what one of my favorite things about you is we could talk music for hours. And there we were, you and I at Alan Parsons. Yeah. But then the pandemic hits and you obviously can't tour. That's where you make a lot of your money. And... I couldn't tour and we're just in our houses and you decided to do a solo record. I did the solo record before the pandemic. Right. But then it came out though. It came out about a week before the right, pandemic. Right. You know, we were, we, we, we were starting rehearsals because our first show was St. Patrick's day in Dublin. And I, I remember being so excited. I'm like, wow, I'm going to be in Dublin on St. Patrick's Day. I'm going to be playing a gig in Dublin on St. Patrick's Day. And then, um, no, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> you were, but now you're not anymore. So uh, that's when uh, I did a couple uh, film shows that I did in the summer of 20. And right after that, I, I saw the writing on the wall and I'm like, 
I got to be ready for what's next. And that's when I started on the new Wigs record. What frame of mind do you get into to like, this is a solo record and this is a Wigs record? Well, I'll tell you, it's very simple. Like I did not, I, I didn't like, it wasn't like, I want to be a solo artist and I'm going to make a solo album. Right. Everybody in my band had a project that they were doing and they weren't going to be able to do anything for a year or so, year and a half. And I was effectively like I didn't I needed something to do. So I just made the solo album to as a project. And, uh, you know, I mean, I've toured solo before, uh, but this was going to be the first time I was going to tour solo behind a new album. Um, and that was exciting to me. I, you know, I love playing in a band. I love playing in the wigs. It's, you know, they're my fa- they're my friends. We we're really good. We have a long history. We can play music from, you know, spanning 30 years, 30, more than 30 now. Uh, and it's fun. Like we, we get to go all over the world and play for amazing people. So that's why I did the solo record. And that's also why, you know, when everybody else was obviously in the same boat I was in the pandemic, I'm, I'm like, I, I went to all of the guys in the band. I'm like, hey, the, are you guys ready to make a record? Obviously, it's going to be an unconventional way that we're going to make it. But I had done it before with Powder Burns, the Twilight Singers record, which uh, we did right after Katrina. So there wasn't a lot of going in and out of New Orleans then. So the easy part for me was like I had Patrick here, you know, so I'm, you know, I had drums and me. And then Christopher, obviously, with the studio, and he plays guitar, too. Uh, and then John Curley, John Skibbick, and Rick Nelson, the other band members, they all, like, you know, living in three different states. But they're all, like, Pro Tools whizzes. I've played with them all for a minimum of, like, 12 years and longer, in John's case. Uh, we know each other. It, 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 it allowed for a cohesive... I mean, if I told you that, you know... Those songs were made by five guys in four states. You'd be like, "What?" Yeah, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. It's, but it's true. Yeah, you know. So, I I wanted to tell you this, but so I ha- I've had the record. I don't know, like a month, and then I lost it in an email or whatever. Couldn't find it, and then so then I finally fire up the record, and and I'm gonna tell you this. This is the honest truth. Usually when a band is together as long as you, we know what we're going to get. We're going to get we're going to get the Afghan wig sound. This is going to be cool. It'll be some new songs and stuff. So when I put this on and this is very rare, I think it's only happened maybe five times in my life where a band has been together longer than 20 years and they put out a record that blows my mind. And I called my buddy right away, because right now I think the Wilco record is the best record of the year, uh, Cruel Country. And no one's talking about it. I think it's fucking insane. But this record I put on, and I was absolutely floored. And, and I'm a guy who worships gentlemen, and I think this is the best record since then. And it is so good that I had Please Baby Please. Yeah. I actually had some tears in my eyes. Like I was like, this song is so fucking good. Thank I you. can't even believe it. I knew when the Wurlitzer came on, I go, oh, I'm, it, Wurlitzer, look, I got Kuzma. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The Wurlitzer immediately grabs me, and I go, okay, there's going to be something good here. But the first five songs, bam, bam, bam. What is it? Go get your Colt. Catch a Colt. Catch a third. Colt. Yeah, that's third. And then what's the one? Jai, 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 Jai is That fourth. song. Oh, my God. So you got one through five, Jai, Jai into uh, Please, Baby, Please. Yeah. I'm like, I can't even believe what I'm hearing right now. Right. Like, this record is fucking amazing, man. Thank and, you. you know, you've been making it for a while. I mean, you're going out to the desert and stuff. I had no idea. And, and also, there's so many layers to this record. Mm-hmm. To me, and I don't know where, how you're going to take this, but it, it, to me, it doesn't sound like this, but it has this um, vibe to me of Octung Baby where there's going to be so much depth to this record to me later on. Mm-hmm. Like Octung, I got, and then years later, I'm still going like, whoa, 
I listen to this. Mm -hmm. And this record is fucking insane. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I we uh, well, we we love it, and it's been super fun to play. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, we finished the record in January. Normally, when you finish a record in January, it comes out in May. But like because of the supply chain issues, like uh, with vinyl the and vinyl stuff, yeah, shortage was really weird. We uh, everybody literally had to wait in line. Yeah, and uh, uh, especially like when Adele puts out a record because she eats a lot of vinyl. Yeah, like uh, that's she she makes so many copies of her records. It's uh, uh, you know you had to like wait for her to and they, and and they'll be using like three four different plants. Oh yeah, in different countries. Yeah. So uh, um, we you know we made the unconventional uh, um, turn of. Like just releasing a couple songs, and then we did thirteen shows in May. We did a show in June. We did fourteen more in July and August, and now we're about to do forty more. So, uh, but we were just like putting songs out one at a time. We did. We put out "Make You See God" first, yeah, because that was going to be in the um, the video game, and then we put out "The Getaway" right before the the May tour, and then we put out line of shots uh incredible song thank you first song on side two that was the third single uh um and then i think when the record comes out next friday please baby please will come out that song just i i think it could be the best one for me that you've ever I, I i hear it and i just go like wow it's the it's the ultimate because it's kind of greg dooley it's afghan wigs but then i know where it's coming from you know yeah. and when it first comes on it kind of feels like um you know costello that uh cruel uh that record that came out like 15 years ago uh good to be cruel or uh, so, something like that i was like oh this kind of costello -y. and then it kind of gets into a little bit of a, a you know a, a different vocal and then it just it just explodes it's funny you mentioned that because i was I, I mean when i was doing the song i was like imagining it to be like something like rainy night in georgia or yeah. uh or sarah smile by oh yeah killer notes the best uh, uh um i can't tell you why yeah. uh um but i listened back to it later and i was listening to it and i'm like man i sound like somebody at the top of that song it came to me i'm like oh my god it sounds like elvis costello yeah it's when i was cruel yeah. that's the song man. i gotta listen to it oh yeah god man yeah. I, I remember i was test driving a mini cooper I was like, I got to get a new car. This is years ago. And they go, it's got Sirius XM. I go, oh, man, that's cool. It's in the car now. And I put it on, and, and he was on, and he's like, this is, uh, this is the you know, title track of the new record. He was like doing a, like, a long talk show. And I'm test driving the car, and I go, fuck, this song's great. I didn't even realize that I'm in the car. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm like, this song is incredible. Yeah. And when it came on, I was like, this has got like a cool nod to Elvis Costello. Mm -hmm. And um, the second song, too, uh, The Gateway. The Getaway. Yeah, The Getaway. Yeah, yeah. it's got like a Beatles-y vibe to Very it. Very much. And yeah. were you, I don't know if at the time, were you watching the Beatles documentary? Was that in your head? Because I watched it and all of a sudden I was down that Beatles rabbit hole again for a good year. Yeah, you know, I did... <sighs> I did watch the Beatles, but that that came out last November. Right? Gotcha. Yeah, so I think I had already written the Getaway by then, but I got to tell you, Dean, the 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 Beatles are just really never far from me. Yeah, it's not like I even listen to them every day or every month, or but when I do, they have my complete attention. You know, like when I. When I decide to get into the Beatles, I, I will, I will listen with you know, and that was the remarkable thing. Like I took, let uh, um, uh, get back is like it's so long, yeah. That like it took like I, I remember like I I couldn't stay awake throughout the whole thing. I would, I would watch it at night. And I'd always fall asleep during it, but then I would wake up the next day and like find where what I remembered and then watch again. And uh, um, 
it was like it's funny like people were like um oh my god he wrote get back right in front of everybody and i'm like that's how it happens that's how it happens that's how it happens you know i'm like i I don't know how you think this happens yeah but watching that i'm just like yep i know that yeah i know that too i've been uh, there you know like there there he is like He's got the melody. He's fumbling for the vowel sounds. He's fumbling for the syllables. Now he's found the syllables. It's like, it's. I'm like, dude, there, there it is. There, there's songwriting right there. Obviously, on an extremely high level. Of course. I mean, you you have to give it like McCartney is in such a zone, in that like you're you're like, oh my god, dude. He's like, pe- he's first of all, they're doing that album, but he's already like peeling off not only like. Uh, like Abbey Road songs, but songs from his first solo record, songs from his second solo record. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. like, Jesus, yeah. dude, you're like, you are way down the road, you know? So, uh, um, but yeah, Getaway for me, like, I'm like, you know, I, I this is, I mean, I'm not like, it, I didn't sit down and I'm like, I'm going to do an homage to the Beatles, but when I after after I I listened to it, I was like, "This song says I love the Beatles." Yeah, yeah, it's great you know though. I mean, yeah, thank now, you. I love when when uh, people do that. I know where it came from. Yeah, but it's not an exact thing. So yeah. I'm like, "Oh, I love this flavor of the Beatles. I yeah. love Dear Prudence. I yeah. love I love when they do stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, um, Lucy in the Sky, sure. that kind of yeah. stuff." So when I hear it, I go, oh, yeah, I dig it. What I don't like is when a band does the whole record like that. And you're yeah, like, yeah. what are you doing, dude? You know? Uh, yeah, don't but, do that. You know? But I, it, it was, it, and it's fun to do, for, it's, it's three minutes long, just yeah. like a just like a, a, a early Beatles song, like, bam, in and out. Eric Gorfain, who did the strings on it, you know, I he did a similar kind of, uh, uh, on the uh, Powder Burns, the, the uh, Wigs record, that I referenced earlier during pandemic, I, I was in New Orleans and I sent him the the tracks in LA and he did, I was like, give it, I'm like, I really want that bendy magical mystery tour string vibe where they bend and like I, I even hummed some of this yeah. stuff to him. And he's so great. He takes great direction, but he's also like a very just skilled, like, I mean, he's doing, he's doing things that I couldn't even have told him to do he's just doing them because he's incredibly talented and uh um when i was done with that one i was like man i'm gonna send this one to my mom see what she thinks and she's like oh my god greg i love this you know but my mom does not love all my songs she loved the getaway oh it's so good well i'm just kind of blown away because uh, look, I own all the records. I've heard, I've seen the band a zillion times, and I've known you for years now. And I feel like I, I'm telling you, man, it's very rare for someone to to deliver this deep in their career. And I was thinking about it this morning. Like I get up every day and I search for the new joke and the the punchline. I search for. Sometimes it's hard to get up and and do it. Yeah. Because you're just like, man, I've been punched in the face for years. And so you can see why people tap out. They don't make new records anymore. They don't try. And look, Stone's one of my favorite, but I know what the lyrics are going to be. You know, you were hot. I was cold. She ran fast. I am old. You know, you know what it's going to be. So when I see somebody like you that is, I, has put so much into this like when i'm like wow man where did the energy come from and the you know especially after the pandemic it was just all doom and gloom and here's this masterpiece record this deep 30 years in you know it's crazy to me i well i'll tell you what um there's a there's a um i can't remember the name of the show i want to say maybe it's slow horses you heard of that show uh, Gary Oldman is in it. I think that's the title. Anyway, Mick Jagger does the theme song. Uh-huh. And it's great. Wow. You should check it out. I'll, when we're done here, I'll okay. play it for you. It, yeah. When it, I was started watching this show, and I'm like, this song comes on, and I'm like, oh, this song's kind of cool. Who's this? And I'm like, I know that dude. Yeah. And uh, and he keeps singing, and I'm like, is that Mick Jagger? You know, And it is. And yeah. he co-wrote the song, too, and it's really great. 
how how did the songwriting go? Was it pretty? Were you even going like, wow, these these are some good tunes? Like, I mean, because this got some different depth to this. You There's know? all kind. I mean, the song, the album, real is extremely eclectic. Like, totally. Neither, no song is like the other. Not at all. But they hang together. They do. Um, I there's I wrote a lot of music for this, and and uh, you know, but what happens is once something emerges, and I start to chase it down, I'll just push the other ones away. They just they just stay unfinished. I've done this for years. The first song that I worked on was actually like the last song that we had worked on before everybody went their separate ways. This was pre pandemic. December of 2018, we started working on this song called Take Me There. Yeah. And it's Take Me There is like probably uh, song track eight, no, track seven, something like that. I started on that one, and uh, that was, I had Lanigan sing on it. I had Ed Harcourt sing on it. But then I brought Van Hunt in to sing on it, and he took it to another level. Like that was... I was like, whoa. So when I started on when I started working on Jija, same thing. I had Lanigan come in on it, but then I had Van come in on it again and every like, you know, if Mark was still around, he would be like, Man, Van Hunt took my shot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like because Van is just like he just he he created counter melodies and like he really got in there. Uh um but then after that, I'm trying to think of like what the order of the songs were. I want to say that um, "Make You See God" and "Getaway" happened. Like I, I went over to my friend Kevin's place, who used to live in Silver Lake, to work on the "Getaway" with Patrick Keeler, and we went over and he was setting up mics, and he had a guitar plugged into a little amp, and Dean, I just picked up that guitar and I just like unconsciously went and patrick's like what's that and i'm like i don't know let's go check it out yeah and we went in and what you hear on that track is me and patrick like it is the demo of us writing it wow if you listen real close you can hear me singing some of the guitar parts and i left them in there um, it's so rocking. It's so it's it, fully. It, it's it opens. Full, it's just rock. It's fully rocking, and and like you know, I've seen other descriptions of it. Like, oh, it sounds like this. It sounds like that. I'm like, to me, like when I got done with it, I was like, this reminds me of Highway Star, <laughs> yeah, Deep yeah. Purple. You yeah, know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's just kind of like unrelenting and like, uh, um, but uh, you know, I remember like I'm working and Kevin comes out. He's like, I'm ready for the mug. We're gonna do a different one now. And we did that one first, and then we did the getaway in the same day. And uh, um, then we had three. What catch a colt was an early one. Great song. Uh, the last two songs I want to say were in flames. The last song, the Le in flames was definitely the last song written and recorded, and and line of shots was the second to la second to last one, and. Uh, um, but once the flow, like once I had Take Me There, Catch a Cult, Make You See God, Get Away, I knew I had the basis of a record and then I could build the rest of the things around. And then honestly, like Please Baby Please, I can't remember what other song we were working on. It was one that got shoved away. But we were gonna do a Wurlitzer overdub on that song and I put my hands down and I'm like, and Christopher goes, wow what's that and i go i don't know and he goes well let's start a new session and i'm like okay and then i just i wrote that song like in an hour oh it's so good yeah. dude yeah now is christopher is he producing or engineering or what he's, was he's producing engineering and mixing like right. we we do everything together like i mean i don't since when i don't engineer since 2014 wow like he, he started working on um in spades Right. He might have even done a little bit of Due to the Beast, too. But then he did my entire solo record and then this whole record, too, uh, ex except for the songs that Kevin engineered. It's funny that when I listen to the record, and I know Christopher Thorne was involved, because I still think that Blind Melon's Soup record is one of the greatest records to come out in the 90s. Yep. It was so 
bizarre. Here you got like no rain and right. the Bumblebee video yeah. and you've got this kind of hippie, you know, band. They're, they're kind of mixed in on the Grateful Dead run with Blues Traveler and shit. Yeah. And then the Soup record drops and I'm like, this is the most incredible weird record ever uh, for the time. I mean, of right. like, what the fuck? Yeah. And I mean, you know, God's Arms, uh, what is it? Teeth. Uh, what is that one? Teeth across the floor. What? Th this record is insane that they made. I always thought, like, I mean, outside of the of No Rain, like, yeah. I always, I remember, like, I when I saw when I saw the real Blind Melon outside yeah. of that, I was like, I mean, these guys are like the hillbilly Jane's Addiction. Oh, that's you know what, what yeah, I mean? total. Oh yeah, totally, totally. But that record, Soup, is yeah. super dark. Yeah. I saw him like two nights before uh, Shannon Hoon passed at Slim's. They were on a, doing a, a mini run of mm -hmm. the soup. They did like Letterman, yeah. and then they did like four dates, and then he's gone. But I remember seeing it just going like, these songs are fucking crazy. Yeah. And it was definitely Jane's influenced, yeah. kind of bizarre, you know. But yeah. him being in on onto this is you know this is a big chris wrote a bunch of soup yeah including soup yeah so uh, yeah i mean it's, it's so it makes sense what this it's just another cool layer onto this record yeah you know it's like wow now what does he have a studio out in joshua tree he has a studio in joshua tree he had the studio that i did those other songs at was at his his silver lake house right chris still owns the silver lake house but he rents it out and then his family moved out to Joshua Tree. I'm pretty sure they'll probably like come go, back. They'll go back and forth, I think. I think, you know, like they're homeschooling their kid who's an incredible like musician as well. Wow. His name's Devlin and like he's 15 and he played me some of his music and like I could tell he was kind of like tripping a little bit and like very like and at the end of it, I go, dude, you are light years ahead of where I was when I was 15. Like, wow. Like I could, my 15 year old me could not touch you. Like you are so, you are so past me uh, in playing wise. Uh, yeah, 15 me, I was, I was just doing covers. Yeah, you know? I mean, it, it, it was, uh, I had written songs by then. But like, you know, I mean, obviously, like people have more technology, more access to things than we did. Who knows what we would have done? I, I may still have just sold dime bags and listened to Skinner. Oh, know. fuck. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> who knows? But uh, uh, um, anyway, uh, the, the Joshua Tree situation, because Christopher's Place is like you can see Rancho de la Luna from oh. Christopher's Place. Wow. They're all neighbors. Hutch, yeah. uh, uh, Queen's old sound man, lives behind them. Uh, Brian O'Connor, BOC, uh, BOC lives on like it's 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 catching Hutch, BOC, Christopher Thorne, and then Bingo lives behind Christopher Bingo from Mojave Lords. That's wild. So it's this compound of groovy, just art. groovy compound of like you know. If you ever need anything, I mean, like I I would. It, all the you know, I would go over. I'm like, hey, Dave, I'm back. Can I use your Mellotron? He's like, I'll bring it right over. You know, so and cool. It's just you know, one stop shopping. Now, did Christopher play the outro solo on Catch a Colt? He no, that's Sk John Skibbick. God, that's killer. Yep, he's uh, Skibbick is the main guitar player on the record, the main lead guitar player. Christopher plays the solo on uh, Please, Baby, Please. That. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. 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 Now he's in the band. Now he's in the band, yeah. Now, how did that happen? And how different is he to you? Like, as far as, like, uh, did he have to find a different tone? I mean, his playing's way different, right? His playing is, I'll tell you what, like, when I, when, when, in, um, when I had Skibbick and Rosser, you know, and obviously Dave is no longer with us, uh, uh, but Dave's an Alabama player. John Skibbick, incredible, accomplished player, but like very, you know, technically just, he went to Berkeley. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. You know, and is, you know, they're both great players, just different styles. 
I'm imagining at some point that Skibbick will come back and and Christopher stays and and I I loved the six piece wigs. That was that was my three guitar. Yeah, I loved the three guitar wigs. Like it was. The, well, you can drop out and just kind of sing, but if you got the I guitar, can, and then but I'm I, also. I mean, you know, I mean, I play a couple solos on this record too. I play the solo on In Spade on In Flames uh, at the end. So uh, um, the uh, uh, that idea to me is 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 great. But but getting back to that, Christopher is so prepared. He's just so good, like. He when we showed up at rehearsal, like he just, we started playing these songs, and I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me, dude! Wow, like, you are. And and he's like, he's like, he's like, is that cool? And I'm like, dude, it is fucking beyond cool. Like I'm, I'm actually like a little flipped out on how well he's incredible, and he's already like bringing riffs and stuff. We're working on the new record already. So. Oh, that's great! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who played the B three on uh, Baby Please, Please Baby Please? The Wurlitzer. Is there a B? Th there's a B three on. One oh yeah, of there's a B three. Yeah, I, pl I play the Whirly and the B three. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah I love yeah. when that comes in because then it takes it to another level. I'm yeah, like, yeah, Oh yeah. shit, yeah. man. The Whirly, the the B three, I just used as like little like yeah. punctuation parts, and uh, turned it on and off, and stuff. But uh, uh, yeah, that's all, most of the keyboards are me. It's so good. Now I I don't have the album cover, but the album cover on the solo record is fucking phenomenal. And I, what was that? A photo that somebody took. It was a photo that I saw on Instagram, and the it was a, a Polish photographer. Who, it's a woman whose name escapes me, uh, but we can find it out later. Uh, I she took a series of pictures, and I was like, oh my god, these look like hypnosis pictures. It's so, it's so good. It looks like it. I'm like I'm like this looks like the Floyd. I want it. Yeah, you know, yeah. and uh, um, and then I put the uh, uh, the anagalipta around it, and me and Christopher Friedman, who does all my layout work and stuff, we sort of dialed it in and and used her photos. I took the photos on the new record. And oh, really? I, I supposedly have one already, but uh, uh, it's uh, you know not to toot my own horn, but it is it is absolutely spectacular. <laughs> it's great, gorgeous. <laughs> Gorgeous package. You'll be psyched. Oh, I'll my I'll give, God. I'll give you one. Here's those tunes, just because I feel like an idiot, because I love soup, but my brain sometimes doesn't fire right. Toes across the floor. Unbelievable. Mouthful of cavities. Car seat. Dad song. Yeah. Those songs are so dark and, and incredibly performed. So I just wanted to get that out there. People yeah, I mean, dude, he, like, you know, they... We're an incredible band, smoking, incredible live band, uh, and and they and they made great records. Mike Napolitano, who uh, did uh, um, the Soup record at Kingsway, uh, um, you know, I worked with Mike on all the early Twilight Singer stuff, and and Mike does drum loops on this song, on this album. Uh, so it's all like it's all like a continual continual kind of family vibe where. It's all very like we've all worked together, and uh, um, and uh, and and been friends and still are. You know, yeah. it's really cool. Are, is there any um, like old tracks sitting around of the Gutter Twins? No, no. There are. I mean, I so somebody asked me about that, and uh, there were two songs that came off the top of my head that I remember us doing, and I have no idea where they are. And one was a an incredibly bizarre cover of California Dreaming. Wow. That I would actually love to hear again because I remember <laughs> at the end of it, like Lanigan goes, Man, it's kind of scary. And I'm like, Do you think? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, it, it was, I'm like, Woo. <laughs> you know, that is the the California dream is the California nightmare. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, um, and then we did a cover of Crossbone Style by Cat Power. Oh wow! And uh, and I know we fit. I have no idea where these are. I'm gonna have to ask Matthias. Um, but that's all. Like we were very Mark and I were very like we would hit it and quit it. We would do it. We'd put it out. We'd do it. We'd put it out. You know so. Uh, but I'll tell you what, that dude wrote so much music. 
on his own really? and, with, and with other people that there'll be Mark Lanigan records coming out like Tupac records for the yeah, next yeah, 10 years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Guaranteed. It's so. crazy to think that Sean's gone and Lanigan, you know, yeah. Sean Smith. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's just, it, you know, that, that's the type of stuff when I'm like looking at, I'm like, oh, fuck, both these guys are gone. Well, it's weird. Like, I, I, I have done, the well, on this tour alone, uh, we have performed Wrapped in My Memory yeah. by Sean and Methamphetamine Blues by Mark. Oh, wow. And each time I'm doing these songs, I'm like, I can't believe I'm doing these songs. Yeah. You know, like, I should not be doing these songs. They should be doing these songs. Exactly. And, uh, but... I'm going to make sure that somebody's doing these songs. And if that somebody is me, I don't do them every night. It's honestly too heavy, Dean. Oh, I, I could imagine. It gets like, you know, like they're it, it, in particular wrapped in my memory. Like that song is so emotional. And like I've, I, I get, I've, you know, there was, we did it in Milwaukee one night back in May. And I like, I got into the chorus and I was like, I'm in trouble. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. I don't know if I can get out of this. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to like lose my composure. You know what I mean? So, uh, um, but that's the game. I mean, that's, that's, that's where for, for a limited time only. Yeah. That's, that is, <laughs> that yeah. is, that is all of us. Yeah. You better, uh, you better act now. Yeah, because and that's and that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Really, that's the way I feel. Like, you know, that's why I I I went from those filmed solo shows to making a new thing, and that's why I'm sitting here talking to you now because w w I took the initiative to get going. That's why you're leaving on tour. Yeah. That's why you and I are both touring at the same time because we're out there because it's all we have is today. That's it. All we have is is our talent and our passion and we and and we want to go out and connect with people and that's what you got to do. That's what I'm going to do for the rest of my time here. Same here. Same no. here. It's like this this is what this is what we do. No. I I look at it as like this is what I've been doing all my life and this is what you've been doing all your life. Yeah. It's wild to think about, right? Yeah. Like I think back about like the gentleman record mm. and I know exactly where I was living. Yeah. I know exactly what bar I was drinking in. I know exactly where I bought burritos every mm -hmm. day. It's a time machine. And I go, I don't remember even that whole life part of my life, barely, except for when songs come on, you know? Yeah. It's crazy how long ago shit was. There's so many, like, there, there, there are song triggers for me where I'm like, I'll hear something and... A lot of times I'll immediately be in the back of my mom's car. Sometimes it'll be fall. Sometimes it'll be winter. Sometimes it'll be summer. So I'll tell you, like, a fall song that I, rem as soon as I hear it, I'm in the back of my mom's car, and it's, and I can see the leaves are changed, and it's still warm, but it's not for much longer. That's Year of the Cat. Oh, wow. Uh, summertime song. Back seat, windows down. Uh, you're my best friend by Whoa. Queen. My summertime, every time, every time it comes on, I'm at the public pool because my mom couldn't afford a babysitter. So they dropped me at the public pool all day. Band on the run. Yeah. Coming out of the metal uh, cone horn type of speaker yeah but you know band up down, 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 oh yeah you know? I, I, that, I mean so, so much of that another summertime song for me that i actually play when i'm conscious of the fact that it's summer and i did it this year is uh listen to what the man said oh god by, so uh, great by 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 wings that 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 song is incredible and i i'll tell you what um i met um Tom Scott from Who's that? Tom Scott, LA Express saxophone player. Right. The sax player on Listen to What the Man Said. Oh, man. And uh, um, I had dinner with him. Uh, my friend, uh, uh, Wright Thompson, who writes for uh, ESPN, he put together this dinner at Chateau Marmont. And Tom Scott was there. And I was like, 
he didn't even tell me and he's like hey greg's tom scott and i'm like are you i'm like do you play saxophone he's like yeah i do and i'm like <laughs> dude and i'm like i gotta ask you and he goes you want to know about the paul mccartney story i'm like i do and the story is mccartney wanted a saxophone on listen to what the man said they got tom scott he's like famous la express like look him up there right there, you know and uh he comes over he he's like well he hasn't heard the song yet so he's like can you just like run the song for me while i'm getting my reads out and everything together so he listens to the song and then he gets his horn put together and then they get you know he blows a couple times and he's like he goes let me take a pass and then we'll then we'll get into it and i'll just get a feel for it he play he, he they do a pass and he goes he goes okay i'm i'm uh I'm I'm ready to go. And McCartney goes. I think we got it, man. Wow! <laughs> it's first take. <laughs> I it's love the, that. It's the only take he did. Whoa! Yeah. Whoa! Seven minutes at the at the studio. Until, yeah. <laughs> and you know, hopefully, you know, took longer to get there. Exactly. Yeah. You know, but like, I mean, and and that sax solo is so oh, smoking, so fucking great. So, so the record comes out Friday because yeah, okay, mm -hmm. and then. Your U.S. tour? Yeah, the the first show is next Friday. The album comes out on Friday. Here, first of all, it's the ninth Afghan Wigs album, coming out on nine nine. Wow. Uh, uh, we're playing Minneapolis. Um, oh. uh, first show. Where are you playing? First uh, Avenue? No, we're not playing First Avenue this time. We're playing the Fine Line, and I'll tell you uh, why I'm so pleased by that is because the Fine Line is a nine minute walk to target field oh shit i haven't been there yet uh -huh. i've been to i've only not been to six of the current baseball stadiums wow and those are the two florida the new atlanta the new texas kaufman in kansas city and target field in minneapolis so i'll be down to five after next friday because i'm gonna go to at least five innings of the uh um of twins versus cleveland and uh, and then I'll probably just like walk back and walk right on stage and start ripping. That's great. Yeah, that's great, man. And then uh, all across the states, what a month are you out? We got five weeks in the states. Yeah, and then we're back for uh, two days after the LA show, and then we fly back to Europe again for three more weeks. It's a little. It's. It, I, I I don't know exactly who talked me into doing that in that that's winter a lot. winter it's, UK. Well, no, I mean no UK. It's like it's not winter UK. It's it's we're we're in Europe uh, from mid October to just first week of November. It'll be fine. It'll oh yeah, be, it'll, it'll be fine. Um, but uh, um, it's just the it's it's like eight weeks. Oh yeah, longer. it's literally eight weeks. Yeah, you know, and I I haven't done that since I was a, a kid. I haven't done that since like congregation tour. It's funny you say that because I'm going out for six weeks yeah. and I haven't done that since probably, you know, shit. I mean, O2 or something. Yeah. And, it, you know, O2, like that's a long time ago, man. It was 20 years ago. Yeah. So I think about, you know, when I saw the tour, they offered it to me. I go, oh yeah, I'm on that. And then the last week, this week, I'm just like, God damn. I know, man. Holy I'm shit. You. That's fucking. You, that's you, you look at it and you see all these fun cities and you're yeah. like, oh. But then you start to like look at like you're leaving in September and you're not done till November. Right. And you're like, uh. It's like, whoa, you know? man, that's fucking crazy. But I mean, I, I, I signed up for it, so I'm going to do it. Same here. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. And I know it'll go by quick once I'm out it'll there. It'll go by quick, and, and, it, and, and, you know, you'll have moments, but like, you know, a week after you're done, you'll be like, fuck, I wish I was doing that again. I, you know I missed I mean? the bus, man. I missed the bus. I missed my dudes. Yeah. I missed finding coffee in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And watching movies at night on yeah, the bus. Watching movies I, I with catch the up mouth. on shit. Oh, yeah. Are you traveling by bus? Yeah. Are you on your own bus? No, no. I'm with uh, Marcus King. So it'll be okay. great. We can, you know. And Do you also know him? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Are you traveling on his bus? Yep. You got a bunk on his bus? Yeah. Wow. So it's great. And How many buses do they have? They have crew bus and band bus? I think so, yeah. Okay, yeah. And then um, each night, I think we're going to jam one together. 
Oh, so cool. I hadn't sang every night for years. Right. That'll be wild. So I'm doing comedy, and then at the end of the night, right. jam one. Yep. That'll be pretty wild. You know, Dean, you are a very good singer. Oh, thanks, dude. So I, you know, that the uh, they're 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 all in for a treat because you. Yeah. I mean, no joke. You can you can do it. You have you are a, a very good singer. Well, I always tell people I I love to do it, but it was you know. It just, it, it'd come to an end, you know? Sure. Now, if ACDC called and right. said, do you want to try this? I know it'd be a suicide mission, but right. I would say yes. It's the only thing I would say yes to leave comedy because mm -hmm. I love comedy so much. Right. Are they touring right now, ACDC? No, they didn't tour at all. It was quite strange. They put that record out. I thought for sure they were going to go. But when I interviewed, I interviewed the whole band last year. Right. And when I talked to Cliff Williams and he said, yeah, I mean, straight on in the camera, he goes, I'll do four shows. Yeah, because I right. said, well, you know, once yeah. the pandemic's over, you got this record and everything, you're going to go out and tour. And he's like, I'll do four shows. So I was like, ooh. Right. You know? Now, sometimes people say that, and then they, you know. Yeah, I mean, how old are those guys? He's pretty though? old, though. I think yeah. he's like 78 or something, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. fucking up there. When you're playing ACDC yeah. volume level volume. But God, dude, look at, speaking of Jagger, look at Jagger. He's great. Like it's, yeah. I mean, do, do you see Jagger like on Instagram? Yeah, he's, he's crazy like, hanging out at bars and stuff. Like, I love him. And like wearing like, you know, like kind of newish clothes and yeah. prancing around like Harry Styles. I'm yeah. like, yeah. Dude, what is up with you, man? Like youth fairy. Yeah, you know yeah, what totally, I mean? Like it's man. like he's like drinking, like, you know. He, he's got, when you got that much money, man, you just go, Give me all, all, whatever it is. Yep. Give yep. me it all. Yep. And his vocal range was never crazy, so it's perfect. Right. You know, he was never like, oh, you know. No, and sometimes like I, I, I have seen some stuff like recently where he's actually like singing again. Remember, remember like in the I don't know if you ever saw him in the nineties or, oh, yeah. or late eighties, like but, Steel Wheels. But just kind of bark, 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 yeah. Bark, 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 bark. Oh yeah, Steel Wheels. What does it? Yeah. Yeah. It's just this kind of like yeah. I'm like what the fuck are you talking about dude and yeah. and I've seen some footage of him now where he's 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 singing yeah and he sounds like I mean first of all dude Mick Jagger like I I, I got I got to go back to what you originally said about uh, Mick Jagger underrated uh, lyricist oh my opinion. god especially you know. that era from 68 yeah. to to 80 yeah you're like what I said that a million times I was yeah. like. Who is this guy that wrote Can't You Hear Me Knocking? Yeah. Who is the guy that wrote Monkey Man? Yeah. Who is the guy that yeah. wrote these insane Dude, lyrics? Who wrote Sympathy for the Devil? Yeah. Who wrote Who wrote Burns Like a Red Coal Carpet? Mad Bull Has Lost His Way. It's like, fucking dude, crazy. Dude, that is like... Who, what the fuck, it's man? It's crazy, dude. Incredible. And, he, and just like whenever they like talk about great lyricists he never gets never he's, he's never in the game and i'm like man he is he is the game 68 to 72 you know? yeah those lyrics are oh, mind-boggling yeah. mm -hmm. and also stuff like tops you know that Dude, when tops and tops in heaven oh uh, tops in heaven might tops in <laughs> heaven might be the two best songs on that record oh absolutely oh absolutely absolutely you know oh man and slave those and slave, three yeah and little tna yeah but tops yeah you know i saw him play tops they'd never ever ever play it mm -hmm. they go we're gonna play one tonight tops and i was like i was in i was you know because i worked for him for like four years and yeah. i was like no fucking way wow and he killed it yeah. you know he killed they're it. playing uh since uh um since once upon a time in hollywood came out yeah they've been playing out of time in their shows oh it's so good and i'll tell you what man like i don't know you saw the movie obviously it's a masterpiece yeah. i've seen yeah. it four times yeah i've seen it three times yeah and top three tarantino movies 100 percent. i think it's its best and i i still think django's is best that's me personally right but like I, I put it in the top three for sure and uh um but when uh when Sharon and everybody pulls up to El Coyote, yeah, oh, and yeah. they're playing out of time, yeah, I love and it. you're like, the first time you see it, I mean, I didn't know what was going to happen, so I I'm didn't like, either. I'm like, but I remember, I'm like, oh my god, what a what a what a song cue, like out of time, like totally. This is where they're eating before they go home, and and it all goes down, and uh, 
that they put that in their set after that i'm like here's the thing about the stones man like and i and i and i and, and even and even like paul mccartney and stuff too like i you have you you, you know you you have a uh you know you want to take care of your audience you right. want them to get what they want but i'm like there's songs you don't have to play stones. it bums me out it you bums have so many great songs yeah and you could move some of those out like i mean like Honestly, man, I'm not. I'm not gonna die if I never hear Satisfaction or Jumping Jack Flash. Same here, man. I'm not. Same here. And especially if you're gonna give me tops, tops, heaven, fuck yeah, little T and A, yeah. How about slave? Fuck you know? Yeah, slave. Can't you hear me knocking? Uh, you know, uh, it, it's the only problem I have with the Stones. Yeah, it's the only problem, and I've said it a million times. I'm like. I love I love that band. They're top five band of all time. To yeah, me. of course. And and I I just you know I just get so bummed that they like okay do your stadium tour do your arena tour, but how about a residency somewhere in like Vegas where you go, this is totally different. We're going to do deep cuts. We're going to do some covers. We're going to do, you know, challenge right. yourselves. Yeah. Go out and get out of the mold and the, you know, the, the same thing. And yeah. I think it, it blows me away that they don't go, fuck, let's look at, we got like 200 songs here. Yeah. And, and I talked to ACDC about it too. It's so weird to me that ACDC, some of the songs on their records have never, ever, ever been played. Yeah. So they record the song. They put it out and it never gets touched again. Right. That's a bizarre thing of a record. Oh, uh, but that's that. I mean, that's uh, most that's, bands. That's, I get it. That's called filler. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. And and definitely when you, especially when you get a, uh, um, when you have a legacy of music, you know. Yeah. You can, but I'm not saying like I, what I'm saying is like you don't have to play Jumpin' Jack Flash and Satisfaction every night. Right. You play one of them, and then put tops in and put yep. monkey man in put shine a light in put you know yeah yeah I mean, they're you know they it, once it was, a once a tour they put in like a weird song starting back in like uh on the steel wheels they did uh 2000 light years right that was crazy because yeah. they had the technology to play the stuff now the stuff you know the the weird like doom, 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 doom. Right. Mm -hmm. um but yeah they do like one a year you know, when I was with them, they had the idea of playing a, a record at night. And right. so they would, let's say, what we're playing tonight. And they would go, bleh, 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 go some girls. And, and after about a week, they're like, we can't play the whole record. We got to do right. like, Let's just do like four songs. Yeah. And then it yeah, whittled yeah. down to like three and they'd learn them at rehearsal. Right. But man, to see him play Sticky Fingers, dude. Yeah. Or the Some Girls record. Did you see that? Yeah. And, and, you know, I saw him in 81, Tattoo You. And when you look at the set list, they just released the whole Tattoo You show from, like, Europe. It's out on the box set of Tattoo You now. Dude, they play, like, seven songs from the new record. Right. It's rad. Right. You know? When was, what? 81. Oh, wow. There yeah, so yeah. I'll, I'll turn you on to it. It's great. That'd be great. I mean, you know, like, we, right now, we're playing... Um, half of the new record yeah. live yeah um and uh you know maybe it'll get bumped up a little bit we have a bunch of other stuff to play but like i make records period to be played yeah you know i i i'm, I'm you know i also understand that you want to hear some other stuff and uh you know the set we've got now is very exciting to all of us we all like we're honoring the past but we're also like staying very in the now. We've made this is our third record in the second act, and uh, and also we're 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 playing one of the songs from my solo record uh, that that didn't get to get played. So there's, it's it's a really cool show. We're playing 90 minutes. Uh, you get 21, 22 songs a night. You know, it's a it's a really good show. And for the American tour, we're we're. Uh, I don't know if you know Pink Mountain Tops, but uh, it's the side project, Stevens' uh, side project for Black Mountain. 
Oh wow! Who, who love are, Black Mountain. Meet, I love Black Mountain too, and he's unbelievable. He's the Black Mountain guy. Wow! And uh, um, so I'm psyched to see it. It'll be a great night of rock and roll. Like they're, you know, they're. I think they're playing 45 minutes. Great. And I so you get you're getting you know two and a half hours of like really high quality rock and roll music. It's gonna be really fun. I'm look, I'm looking forward to the whole experience. Last time I talked to you, you were playing uh, 335s and uh, humbuckers, and mm -hmm. when I, of course you were known for that that telly for all those years. Right. Uh, what are you on now? 335. Yeah, dude. Once I got that 335, I'll tell you what. When we were making powder burns again, going back to that record, uh, I played a. Uh, there, there was not literally not. I would never played a Telecaster. I just I I kept playing this Guild Starfire, semi hollow body. Uh, it had a Bigsby on it, which I would never use and. Uh, uh, when I went back to like do the to start rehearsing for the tour, I got my Telecaster out and I'm like, these songs, cling, cling, these cling. songs are like, <laughs> and and I called Mike and I'm like, I'm like, dude, uh, he goes, oh yeah, man, that's that ain't gonna work. Yeah, and uh, I'm like, should I get a Starfire? He goes, no, don't get a Starfire. Like y the Bigsby will go out of tune every song. Get a 335. And then I went, uh, um, I I went to Guitar Center on Sunset and. Uh, um, I tried out a 335. I liked it. I didn't like the color. Uh, the guy that worked there, he goes, uh, "I found a black one in Pittsburgh. You want me to? You want me to send out for it?" He goes, "He goes, if, he goes, no obligation. If you don't, if you don't buy it, somebody will. But I'll call you first. And he called me, and I, I, I like came in. I saw it like I've seen all of my favorite guitars. I saw it first. And I'm like, oh my God, I love you. Yeah. I can't wait to touch you. I can't <laughs> wait to feel you. And uh um and 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 it's been my main axe for sixteen years. Wow. Yeah. And then what's Christopher playing? He's playing a telecaster. Wow. Yeah. And does he play those matchless amps still? No, we're all playing uh uh we all play uh Mesa Boogies. Oh, killer. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. I've been Mesa Boogie since '96. So great, and uh, um, we we got a, we have a deal with them, and I showed he's still got the uh, he's still got his old amps at the studio out there. I've I've played out of them probably even on this record, uh, but uh, um, we all have uh, we all have the uh, the the Mesas, and we. We uh, we do the grills with album artwork. Oh They're yeah, dope. it's cool. Oh, I know. I went to the last tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that that was... the, the new the new ones in are... spades was rad. Yeah, the new ones are sick, dude. Like it's. Where are you playing here? Belasco. Oh yeah. Oh, when is yeah. that? It's uh, October twelfth. Ah oh, fuck! I'm gone. Still. Yeah, but I'm gonna look at your thing and see if we cross anywhere. Yeah, check it out. That'll be great. That would be that would be great. Yeah, I'd love to see Marcus King, actually. Oh, too. man. Yeah, he's got a great voice. Oh, my God. Great songwriter. Yeah. Five records out, 26 yeah. years old, yeah. you know? Him yeah. and Neil Francis, who's on the tour, is fucking great. Neil's like a kind of a, you know, uh, he's kind of, you know, Elton Johnny. Right. Where is Marcus from? South Carolina or okay. North Carolina, one of the and two. how'd you meet up with him? I, you know, somebody sent me... People send me music all the time, you know, and I'd say out of a hundred ones I like, you know, they'd be, right, yeah. you're going to love this. And right. I, oh man, you know, so somebody sent it over and, and, you know, it, you know, oh, this guy burns on guitar. When people say that to me, I'm already out. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, Cause it usually means no songs. Right. Mm -hmm. Comes over, song comes on. I'm like, whoa man what is this song next song i'm like wow and it's you know what i call soul rock which i love mm -hmm. you know it's kind of r&b but rock yeah it's like uh black crows now you know like people are like if you like the black crows southern harmony mixed with like aretha franklin you know you're gonna love marcus king right. and he wrote these songs so i was like well this guy wrote these songs these are songs wow. man and his songwriting's been getting better and better and each record if i put together the set list uh i would say he would have like 15 crushing songs wow yeah they're all like i mean it's really r&b soul and this new record came out friday is straight up like zz top to guello you know, wow. just three piece cream, you know, like just got paid type right. of stuff. Wow. Yeah. So I, I, it is a freak of nature. He's so good that I worry. You yeah. know, I'm like, ooh. So when somebody's that good, I'm like, fuck. You, uh, should get it, you should get him to cover. You guys should do just got paid. 
I know. I, that's the song you should suggest that you guys yeah, do. Yeah, that'd be great. That's a jam, dude. I, dude, I, I remember Junkyard used to do it. That oh, band really? Junkyard. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when uh, we opened for them on the first record, and they just... Dun, 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 dun. Just right. that fucking tune is just so good. Yep. But yeah. Well, I, Brian I, Baker was in Junkyard, yep, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. He was, yeah. But yeah, man. Speaking of that, here we are. Three-day weekend. It's the we're winding down. The summer is gone. And uh, last time we were here, we didn't talk about it, but uh, the greatest summer movie of all time was Jaws. Mm -hmm. And you and I have been wanting to do like a Jaws episode for years, but we've been swamped. But I brought you over a, a Quint painting. You brought painting. me over a Quint painting. It's gorgeous. Yeah. And we, uh, when we're both back yeah. before the end of the year, yeah. let's let's get on the Jaws tip. Let's do it. And we'll just do a full episode on Jaws. I will say this. I'm so glad that they've never remade it. Well, I'm not. I, I am too. But you know, it, they've made it IMAX now. I know. Oh, so I got to see that. I'm going to see that too. Yeah, I think it's coming up here in a couple weeks or something. Yeah. IMAX and... Um, and what's the other one? There's two versions you could see. Well, I saw the 40th anniversary back, when was that? Six years ago? Right. Um, seven years ago? Yeah. Did it come out in 75 or 76? 76, yeah, right before, uh, right before uh, Star Wars. So, Was it Star Wars 76? 77, 77 Star Wars, right? So I saw that back on the big screen for the first time since whenever. But I really, I, I, I got to see IMAX. I, I got to see IMAX. Yeah, where is IMAX? Uh, Universal? I don't know. We'll, when we get off here, we'll Yeah, we'll, we got to find out. All right, we'll do the Jaws. And then, okay, congrats, dude. On the, and now look, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass or whatever. And In Spades was good. And, and, and I love, of course, you know, I love uh, all the records over the past, 1965. Everybody has that. That's what's great about your band. Everybody has one. Of course, everybody, yeah. gentlemen, what's the fuck? But I didn't think you would ever get to this level again. For me, as far as excitement, right. you know, when you're you, you sure. know, you're deep, deep in a band, uh, a few bands, like I said, have ever done it. And uh, I think Metallica did it with a record where I was like, what the fuck? They put this thing out this deep in their career? Yeah. But this record is is smoking, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, oh, my God. It comes out Friday, people. There's three songs right now on Instagram. How Do You Burn? And it's it's not Instagram on iTunes and everything, right. and uh, and get get out there on the tour, and go see these guys. Uh, and Keeler, shout out to Keeler, yeah. And uh, all and get out and see uh, uh, Marcus King and Dean Del Rey on their tour. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and hopefully I'll see you out there on the road, Deaner. Oh, that'd be so dope. Yeah, I'd do love it. when you're in a city and you're like, hey, there's some buses over there. Who else is here? <laughs> you ever do that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I tell you, who else is here? Oh right. man, it's uh, just yeah. for, you know, somebody yeah. you go, oh, I know those guys. You start right. texting, where yeah, are you yeah, at, yeah, man? Yeah, I'm in the yeah, lobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like you said, searching for coffee. Right, the I'm, best. Do you does the bus leave from here and you put all your shit in it? Because I got to fly to Philly, so I'm like, oh my god, I got to bring shit. We have uh, um, our tour manager and our uh, stage tech are driving all of our gear in a van, yeah, to Minneapolis to meet the bus. So I'm gonna go over. Um, I have a um, I I I bought a wardrobe a, a, a road wardrobe case yeah. for the first time. Yeah. So I'm gonna go hang my stage clothes in there and put my uh, put all of my stage clothes in there. So all I have to do is bring a carry on bag. Yeah. Um, I I'm bringing my golf clubs because me and the front of house uh, guy both play golf. By the looks of the schedule, we'll get to play at least five times, which wow. is rad. And uh, I'll show you this when we're done. Um, Backstages are usually weirdly vibeless places. Totally. I have a vibe kit. Oh, yeah? I bought two lights. Uh -huh. I bought a Bose speaker that's got this, this, the sub has so much ass in it. Wow. It's phenomenal. And then I, I got, uh, I got my, uh, um, I put my incense and some scarves in there too. I love it. And the backstage is going to be heaven. What glasses are you going to bring? I'm bringing the uh, um, well. I'm bringing the ones I showed you, the yeah. retro super future yeah. uh, rose colored glasses. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably bring my. Uh, I'll probably bring a pair of Jacques. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jacques Marie Maj. Jacques Marie Maj, and then you, you 
you know, big fan yourself. Yeah. And uh, but Keeler has been ro- Keeler's rocking the Jacques right now, and I'm I'm sort of like, eh. yeah, yeah. He wears the Enzo. Yeah. And I and, and the Enzos are enough like the ones that I have from a couple years ago. I'm really loving these those retros. Are, those are cool, They're man. They're fantastic. Yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah. I've been rocking these Blake Kuaharas. Those are gorge. Yeah. I love them. But like again, like you're my friend, so I can't wear that. Yeah. I Patrick's my friend. I can't wear the Enzo. I I look at the Enzo, I'm like, wish I would have got to that first. Oh. But he got to him first. But I got to that first. <laughs> so uh, you need to have your own look, but you, you know. can still but you can still appreciate your friends look yeah so, all right well thank you man for doing the show my pleasure diener hope hey. to see you out there look at gertie she's gertie. Over here like hey man what are we doing today gertrude all right i love you dude right, i love you man i'll see you